to kick things off, I have actually worked with Doug for many years. I, I don't even know how many years it has been, Doug. We brought you, it's... you've been a master forever. So he's a painter master elite. Um, he's also been a professional illustrator for close to a decade. So he has a ton of experience. He has a very impressive client list. I'm sure all of you have heard of games, Game of Thrones and Planet of the Apes. Um, he does a lot of comic work. So Dark Horse Comics, Hasbro, so these are all huge names. And we're lucky because today he's gonna share some of his tips for blocking in values and colors and also rendering using brushes that will help to express texture in your document. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Doug. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started. Uh, here I have a drawing. Uh, I drew up pretty quickly uh, about a game that my kids love to play. And if you have kids, uh, they, you probably have heard of the game, The Ground is Lava, where kids can uh, just imagine that the, the ground is just made of lava and they can use whatever it is to stay off the ground, whether it's a pillow, or a sock or a piece of paper or books. They are constantly jumping, playing, trying to stay off the ground. So this is an illustration of my son, uh, Kieran. And uh, here he is on a journey. And this is taking the, the idea of that game pretty literally and uh, making you know, a river here that he has to cross, cross over uh, out of lava. And he's got these floating rocks to get to this this uh, doorway here. So uh, to start, what I did was I, well, I did the drawing. I have reference for my son here. Uh, hey, Doug, I I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure a lot of people were saying that they were not seeing the screen. I don't think that that is currently the case. But if you guys can please let me know in the questions panel if everything is okay right now? Because it looks like it's been resolved. Okay, good. Okay, thank Great. you everybody. Sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna yeah, go no back worries. on. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, so I have this, this sketch, final drawing. And what I did was I came up with some ideas for colors and created a new palette so that um, things like the rocks, uh, I came up with a couple different values for the of colors for that. Uh, the sky, I have a range of colors for those. The lava, I looked up some reference of what lava looks like, pulled up some colors for that. And then I pulled some colors uh, for my character. Uh, for flesh tones, I have backpack color, his shirt color, and other, tones you might see in his in his costume or on the character. So I created this little, uh, this file. It's a separate file so that I can open it and close it. And so I can pull the colors from that while I'm working. So what I do to start uh, is blocking in the colors. Basic, basically, I'll go to uh, one of my favorite tools to use. Uh, for blocking colors is the scratch board tool. So I will take my my drawing. Okay, let's go here, my drawing. I will set my drawing to multiply up here. You can choose, it'll, it'll come in as default, but I wanna set it to multiply so that it floats on top and I can see my line work and I can work underneath. So I created another layer underneath. And the way I like to work, I like to separate at the beginning, blocking in stage. I like to work kind of loosely um, and I like to work in layers as well. So it makes it easier for me to differentiate um, the foreground elements and the background elements. So what I'll do is I'll start by picking a color. I got the sky color. I'll start with this uh, darker sky color here and I'll make my scratch board tool brush big so I can just start blocking that in. Doug. Yes. Anne has a question because she has noticed that your document says PSD. So she's wondering 
how you did the initial drawing. Oh, okay. Um, so what I did was I did I did the um, the drawing as a you know in graphite uh, on just on a regular piece of paper and I sketched it and then scanned it and I scanned it. I used uh, Photoshop to scan, so it brought it into Photoshop and and that's how I saved it and that's how it ends up with a PSD. Um, and I did some redrawing on the on um, the character. So I did that in Photoshop as well and tightened it up and then saved it and then brought it into Painter. And cool thing about Painter is it can open up Photoshop documents nicely and it can you can actually when you save you can also save as a Photoshop document. Perfect. Does that answer? Thank you. Hope that answers. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Okay, so I blocked in the sky. I might do another layer and then go here back to my color palette and choose uh, a color for the rocks. And so I created another layer. And then with the uh, scratchboard tool, I can go back in and start blocking in that cut on my rocks. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could use, use the scratch board tool to just block it in by hand, or you could also use your lasso tool and lasso sections to help speed up the process if you're like me, and usually on deadline, you want to try to make as uh, make make the process as quick as possible. So then uh, I can go back to my brush and then paint paint that in. Oh, where'd my selection go? Lost my selection. So let's go back and do that lasso again. And you can add to selection. If you hold down shift, you can add to your selection. Zoom out a little bit so I can get all these rocks in. Graham is wondering why your um, why you have a watercolor layer with your sketch on it. Uh, when I took when I imported the uh, flattened drawing. I, it came in as uh, a f on the canvas, and so when I wanted to um, separate it so I could put it on top, you can't put the canvas layer on top. So I uh, I duplicated the layer, and it it brought it to. Or actually, no, I put lift canvas to watercolor layer, and it put it on. It made a watercolor layer out of it. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so I'm still using the lasso tool to circle all these rocks here. And then with my, go back to my scratch board tool. Oops, I forgot a section there. And I could just color this all in. And that saves a lot of time. All right, so I did those. And then we'll go back to my lasso. Again, hold down shift to select and add to your selection. And since I have these rocks are, I have this, these rocks that lead to that doorway are going to be kind of floating above. I may do another layer just to separate those and I might choose a different color for that. So I may go here. Now, if you, if you're on your brush, your paintbrush tool and you hold down option, you can select 
the color you want. So I went to my palette there, select it, and now I'm filling in this. All right, and then I'll do the same for these rocks here. And these can be connected, so it could be one big shape. Yeah, Is there a reason that you use the default mode for the rocks, but multiply for the sky? Let's see. I didn't actually see that, but it's a question that somebody has. Okay. Um, right now I have default for the, for the sky, which is, okay. I can go in here and let's label these layers so we're not confused here. Oops. Sky. And it should be a, a normal layer. And then uh, mountains. And then I'll just call this rocks. Okay. The so only, yeah, the only layer you want to have is, uh, set to multiply is your drawing layer. So you can see your, dra your drawing on top. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So I'll just lasso all these out. And then I, oops, we're on the wrong layer. There we go. Choose that color again. All right, so basically this is what I would do to block in the whole, the whole image. Uh, do we have any questions so far on, on this yes. step, like blocking in? A, a couple people have wondered, um, since you're, you're hand painting the selections, you could also just dump a fill in there, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. You could. Yeah. So with the, with any application, there's, there's ways to, uh, there's numerous ways to, to do <laughs> one thing. So yeah, you could use the, uh, you know, fill it with the paint bucket tool. It might be quicker that way too. Um, so I would do that, block this whole thing in. And uh, so we're not uh, spending so much time blocking in. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done the whole image already. So we can jump to a next step if everybody's good on blocking in colors. So here is another file. I, duplicated that file and and uh, and I flatted it in for to save time because actually blocking in colors um, I mean it takes some time to choose the colors get lasso all the detail uh, if you look at his backpack I've already lassoed out and colored in you know all the little details that he would have he's got a pocket watch he's got a belt uh, sword uh, he's even got color for his socks so I blocked everything in so far on a separate layer, just to save time. There's uh, one more question about your blocking yeah. in. Do you always go from background to foreground when you're blocking everything in? Uh, yeah, typically I work background to foreground. Um, even with painting uh, and rendering, I'll start with the background to foreground elements. And uh, what kind of tablet are you using? Right now I'm on a Cintiq, uh, so it's the, what is it, 31 inch Cintiq? Okay, all right, I'm done interrupting for right now. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay, so, so let's just imagine that uh, I took this, this file and flatted it all in and it's all blocked in and it's ready to, Go to the next process. So in this process, we have our background sky. I just should have layered. Okay, so we'll work on the sky here. All right, so with the sky, 
there's a couple of ways I approach blocking in and now jumping into the values. Um, I want to give a lot of emphasis uh, to help with the composition, uh, emphasis pointing towards this child to our main character. So I may start and go from dark to light. So go back to my color palette here and I might, you know, with uh, painting skies, I may block in some, grab a, a brush. This is one of my favorite brushes, uh, the new uh, Sargent brush, which you can find under artist favorites, Sargent brush, or, so what I do, actually what I, what I do is I'll go through and pick out the brushes that I, I use constantly and I'll create a new folder for that. Uh, it, which, so like if you want the scratch board tool, you can go up here and go to the lines. I call them the lines, but these, these settings here, and you can, you can create a new brush category. Okay. And you can drop that into, so I created one that's called favorites and that's what I'm working from. So the Sergeant brush, I'll come in here and start blocking in some, some values. Why is that? Get the strength up high. There you go. Why is this? There we go. So I like to have a lot of texture in my painting. So with the Sargent brush, it really allows you to bring in some, some of that texture and push your values in dark pretty quickly. So I'm going to start blocking in some, some cloud shapes here. And again, I want to help my composition. I want to help bring the attention to our main character. So I'm going to create cloud shapes that are going to dark. These are dark clouds, obviously, because I'm working with a darker value. I'm going to start bringing in these angles that help lead us to our character here. Now I use this brush to a lot for texture, so I can start bringing in texture right away. You can see there's some really nice painting, painterly texture happening here with the Sargent brush. All right. So I got a dark value and I can come back in with a lighter value. And in this one, this with this color, go with a real light color. I'm just gonna start bringing it in around the edge here. There's some curiosity as to whether or not you have a preview unit of the 32 Cintiq. It was brought to my attention that it's not coming out until October. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> is, let's see, which one is this? Give me a second. Maybe it's the 22? It's 22. Okay, Maybe. that's what I thought. Everybody Sorry, was the... getting, they were very envious. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's see. Let me tell you exactly what I have. Let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Did I say 32? I meant, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe you said 22 and we just misunderstood. <laughs> it's the it's 22 HD. Okay. Thanks.
Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> I'm not that special <laughs> to work with. <laughs> yeah. Welcome may have asked me, hey, you know, how, how did, did you get, get that? Yeah. yeah. All right, so here we go. I'm starting to really bring in some value and some color. And again, I'm working pretty loosely on this at the start here. I don't want to just jump right into uh, you know, rendering right away. All right. Right now I have three colors going on here. All right, next what I'll do is I'll go to my next layer and let's call this one the mountains. And now this is important, a little setting here. At the top here you can set preserve transparency. So what that means is I can paint, let's go choose my color here. I can paint on this layer without affecting the layers, without going outside of what's on that layer already. So I can come in here with a color. Let's show you with the lightest color here. I have this light value and you can see I can work on this layer without affecting going outside the what's already on that layer. Does that make sense? Yes, does right. to me. I'll let you know if anybody asks. So I can come in here and start blocking in some values there. Like come back in. I think um, this brush is one of the top used brushes and most loved in painter. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been using this brush for years and uh, it just does so many things that I, I love. And it just makes it so easy to bring in like that, the realistic textures that I like. And it just helps create some like, uh, you know, those happy mistakes. Right. When you're working with traditional mediums and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll do something with this brush and say, oh, my gosh, I love how that works. How, how do I duplicate that? And sometimes it's like hard to duplicate, but uh, you try. We try. All right. So we got that. I'll come back in. Maybe I'll choose a darker value. You can select again with the option tool. And I like how this, um, if I take the drawing off, you can start to see how this thing start to, how it's starting to come along. But what I did was I selected uh, some of the gray that the drawing has in it. When it's multiplied over the color, it kind of creates another color. So I can go in there and select that color and use that as a darker value to paint in here. So if I have my light coming from the right side, uh, it's going to create some shadow on this, this mountain. So I can create some depth here uh, to this form. And so I'll just keep blocking this in. How long does it typically take you from sketch to final, just a ballpark? Uh, it really depends on, the for, for one, the level of finish. Um, so it could take, I can do a painting in a day, but it won't be as finished as, um, as something I might spend 
a day and a half on or two days. Is that, I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really depends on uh, the deadline. Uh, I've worked on, yeah, paintings in a day that look like it should have taken me, you know, a week. <laughs> That's when the pressure puts you into high speed. Yeah, yeah. And then, again, it, it helps to know the programs really well, too, so that you can make um, quicker decisions. So, and that, you know, that just comes with, like, years of using the programs. Uh, and, again, there's, like, 20 different ways to do one thing. Can you repeat again? Anne is wondering how you're able to paint on the rocks without going outside of the lines. Okay, that, that is the um, preserve transparency tool. So if you look over here on your layer section, I'm just hovering over this. It's kind of like a checkered board with a lock. Mm -hmm. If you click that, it turns yellow or orange. And so you click that, and then it's set for that layer. Okay, great. All right, so keep blocking that in and start to see uh, <laughs> something happening. I like this stage a lot because it really gives you a chance to kind of explore uh, the values and the lighting. Come back in, choose, choose another color. Is that how you typically work with your colors? To have, uh, have them kind of set up prior to starting your painting? Uh, I do. I usually create something, it may not be as, as elaborate as this, but I definitely have some sort of color palette that I'm working from. Um, you know, in, if you're working for a client, uh, they're going to want to know what the colors are at the beginning. Uh, you know, in the sketch, sometimes I'll do a, a pencil sketch, get that approved, then you jump to a color sketch. And a lot of times that indic shows you what you, shows the client what the final colors might be or an indication of that you're already thinking about colors and then I'll use those and as a kind of a, a starting block for for my final painting It also helps you, uh, you know, when you actually sit down to, to do your painting, it helps to already have some some idea of what colors you're going to use. You know, if you can, you know, sometimes it helps to look through some of your, look at uh, photographs that you're inspired by or other illustrations that you're inspired by, and you can pull colors from those, color palettes from that, like what, Think about what you're trying to convey and what color palette will will help the best to convey that. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. Uh, let's, go, let's go with a darker value. Bring back into this guy here. But for for uh, for this webinar, I wanted to have it set up so that uh, it was easier for me to choose colors. All right, well, next. I'm, I'm impressed because um, I know how hard it is to actually paint on demand, <laughs> and you're painting this full thing, so it's pretty impressive. I'm gonna. I probably won't get it totally finished in the in an hour, but. You can start to see, uh, you know, I'll render uh, some aspect to mm -hmm. it uh, after blocking in the saw in. Uh, let's see. So back to the rocks. We got, maybe I'll choose that color. 
lighten it up. Okay, and again, I have, let's call this the rocks, floating rocks. Call it that. I have that set to uh, preserve transparency. And then I'll start, you can see that I don't have to worry about trying to follow that edge. I can just paint right over it. I'll choose that color there. All right. And as I suspected, a lot of people have shown up um, quite a bit after you started. So mm -hmm. I just want everybody to know that this is being recorded and I will put it up on Painter Tutorials today. And then you'll also receive a link from GoToWebinar within 24 hours directly to the recording. But you can always look on the playlist a little bit later today because I will pop it up there. Awesome. So again, I'm just blocking in these uh, some values in here, kind of indicate where I want the light to hit, and also create some texture in these rocks with this brush. There was a question asking, what is this brush again? This is the uh, sergeant brush. Yeah. Okay. And you can see so, that up at the top of it, the UI there. Yeah. So if you go look at your brush palette here, there's so many brushes to work from. And if you go to artist favorites, sergeant brush, you can also see the scratch board tool there. Oh, and the new function of, I don't know if you had this in, uh, in Painter 2018, but the fact that you can go through all these brushes from past versions is amazing to me. Yeah, you could, but I want to say it wasn't as easily accessible. I can actually go back to 2017 and look, but yeah, that's a good point that you can load up older brush libraries and access those brushes. I love it because uh, for years I was working with, um, which one was it? I still have it on here, <laughs> Corel Painter 11 and just the functionality of some of the brushes on that that version I stuck with for for a few years. And I love the fact that it's all, I can access all that in one, one application now. It's, it's pretty awesome. Oops, go back. I want to add a little bit more light hitting this, this wall here. This doorway is, is probably going to be an important focal point in this illustration. So I want to bring as much contrast as possible in there. Bring that. How did you narrow down the brushes that you end up using all the time? Did you kind of have to experiment with all of them or 
yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of that. I, yeah, I I tend to be a person who, when I find something I really like, I I stick with it. Um, but uh, you know, of course, you know, when you have like extra time, you can. I'm constantly trying out new new tools and presets and. But um, yeah, it really depends on uh, yeah, how much free time I have <laughs> to explore and try to find new things. Usually I'm just, I know what this brush does. Uh, I know what, I can get this effect from it or I can, you know, it, what it can bring to, uh, to the table for that, that one project. And I pretty much stick with it. And the same thing in Photoshop. If I'm working in Photoshop, the same thing. I'll, I have set set brushes that I use. Another thing I love about this is you can also bring Photoshop brushes in too. I tried to do that and I had 900 and something, almost a thousand brushes in Photoshop and I had to force quit Painter because I didn't want it to uh, import every single brush that I had. Raquel is wondering if you create your own brushes. Um, sometimes I do. Again, it, it just depends on uh, playing around with the presets. Uh, so you can customize your brushes and save that as a as a preset. Um, again, I I used to do a lot of that, and then I just kind of narrowed it down to the brushes I like and and save that. Those, those presets. All right, so I'm going to come back in to do some of the lava here. So figure out where I want that. Everybody is very interested in your process and impressed with what's happening right now. Um, so just some of the comments are that it would be wonderful to see you actually do the sketch phase as well. And I don't know if you have anything like that posted anywhere. I know we've done tutorials in the past. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look and see what we have, but I just wanted to let you know that everybody's really enjoying this. Oh, that's good. Great. Uh, yeah. You know, I would love to show the whole process from sketch all the way through to the final. Uh, but again, like an hour to do all that is. Uh... Oh, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, yeah. little. I know that. A little much. See, and it's daunting to paint on demand like this, which is why, you know, many of the webinars, like you said, one hour isn't long enough. So most people do have stages where they just kind of point things out. Yeah. Especially when you're answering questions as you go along. But that's that's awesome to consider for for the for the next time. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Graham is wondering how you combine two layers without dropping them onto the canvas. Without dropping them onto the canvas. Okay, so great question. So what you want to do is come over to, let's say I want, uh, I, I get this to a certain point, um, and I, I'm ready to drop the mountains onto the sky. So what you do is you, you can co select the mountains, and uh, you can drop. Let's see. Uh, oh, nope. You select the two layers, and then you say collapse layers. And it puts it all on one layer. Oops, excuse me. Thank you. Uh-oh, can you undo it? Oh. <laughs> yep. OK. All right. So, uh, one thing I'll I'll do for the to really start to bring in some uh, values into the 
to our main character here. Um, there's a couple different things that you can do. Um, one thing I like to do is I'm, I'm going to approach it differently and with a different brush for the character, uh, for our main character here. I'm going to select him, that layer, and then I'm going to go to effects. Right now, um, I like the way I like to light characters is I like to start with darker values and then pull my lights out. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do that. Right now I blocked in pretty much like the, the, the flat colors uh, where there's no lighting on this character at all. So what I might do, and I have all his character colors here, I can always come back into those, but what I might do is come in here and go to effects, tonal control, and adjust colors. And I get this little window right now. Oh, my set setting errors is uh, I might come down and lower the value on the character and desaturate him a little bit. Okay, but I'm not going to play with hue shift. So what that does is it gives me more of a 75% <clears throat> lit character. Uh, so I can come back in and choose, you know, highlights and paint in the light. So I'm for for the character, I'm going to try a different brush. Uh, again, I go to my favorites here. And I have a, I can use, let's try this guy here. Uh, I love the blenders here. And you have a grainy, uh, grainy water in here that is pretty awesome for adding color. And typically, you don't use the grainy blender for for adding color. So you have to come in and play around with the reset so you can add color. But this is a nice, soft brush. And you can start bringing in color this way. So again, it's grainy, jittery sponge. And play around with the reset here which will bring in more color. You can start to see that happening. There you go. And oh, and remember to preserve transparency on this layer. I'm on the main character. I'll just call MC. So I can start bringing in some light. Start getting some volume to this character face uh, do you ever use merge modes on your layers at all outside of multiply for that watercolor layer uh, not typically okay and Graham is wondering this might be jumping the gun but once the painting is complete, do you use Photoshop adjustment layers at all? Uh, again, it, it just depends on the, uh, the final that I'm going for. But yeah, sometimes I do bring this back into Photoshop and uh, adjust colors in certain ways. Uh, I could do, if I want to unify color, uh, Photoshop has a great uh, setting, um, a photo layer that you can add on. Uh, which can tie all the colors together nicely. So like if you want like a, a nice warm cast over it. Um, I'm not sure if a painter does that. I've just been using Photoshop and Painter in that, that way for so long that it kind of works I, for, for I me. I think that's pretty standard practice amongst most artists because painter is more made for the painting aspect rather than that image editing part yeah. of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Come in here and start lighting this guy. So let's choose, and right now I'm just blocking in these colors. So it's, uh, let's take a look at what we look at, what it's looking like uh, when I turn this off. So slow, slowly starting to build it up. That's amazing, Doug. Showing through. <laughs> Thank you. People are wanting, they're just dying to know about the end of this process. So for those of you that are, have these questions, I'm just going to hold them for right now so that we can give you a chance to work your way through. So uh, um, I will, I'll just keep working on it at, at, at this rate, you know, and this kind of blocking in and then when I'm, you know, comfortable with where the colors are at and and how much uh, of the lighting is all set. Then I'll come back in and start really pushing the, you know, whether I may come back in and start rendering the clouds a little bit so uh, they're not just so, I want them to be softer and push back. So they're not, right now they're really high contrast um, graphically. So, why don't I just show you that now? So with the, uh, I'm still going to use the grainy jitter sponge. At uh, this time, I'm going to take all the reset out. And that way, it just becomes a, a blender. So I can come back in here and start moving and blending these colors. All right, so I can start creating softer shapes alright this one I may turn off our uh, preserve transparency for that Let's see in some places that are affected by that Do you have the Cintiq set up to zoom in and out or a keyboard command? I use key, key commands. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just, <laughs> I have an artist uh, coworker. He's like, why don't you ever use the Cintiq, you know, the, all the presets on the, on the sides? And I'm like, I don't, I could never figure it out. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever really tried to figure it out. And, uh, I'm just so comfortable with the key commands, you know, with the space bar and then zooming in with uh, space bar and command on the Apple, um, on the Mac, that I'm just comfortable with that. And knowing that B is for brush on the keypad. I know that you've already discussed this a little bit, um, but with your color palette, you had mentioned that sometimes it might be client driven or, but how do you go about the process of selecting the colors for your paintings? Is there a certain way? Um, again, it's just, uh, what, well, think about what the story is calling for. If you're working on an illustration of, a, a narrative illustration and what the mood that you're trying to create is because that's what color really is it's creating a mood it's creating uh, it's a storytelling tool uh, if you want to have like a really kind of tense uh, thriller type of story you might choose cool colors and high contrast um, you want nice 
calm, peaceful, you might choose warm colors and subtle contrast. So it really comes down to what what you're trying to tell in this in your in your piece. Um, in this illustration, I can tell you I'm going for more of an adventure scheme. So I'm going to have some really bright, warm tones and uh, some dramatic lighting on this character. Uh, I may have some warm from the some warm light coming up from below from the lava hitting our character on the left side so along this edge and then keeping uh, with uh, maybe a light source from uh, from the right hitting hitting in the back of his head does that answer your question I believe so. I don't see. see. So, so you can s you can see how far I've taken the uh, the clouds here. They're really kind of dramatic clouds. And uh, again, I'm using the grainy jitter sponge. And if you zoom in, it it's got some really nice texture. And it looks like almost like pastel. Oh, okay. So some of that. Sometimes I get confused, like what is on that layer. So my drawing layer there, if I turn that off. Okay, and then there's some extra stuff going on here. With the eraser tool, I can get rid of some of this extra stuff on top layers. All right, bring back my drawing. Uh, come back to the mountain layer, and and I don't like how how um, graphic this lava is. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the same brush at this point and just start blending that a little bit. This is a good one. What size is this canvas? Uh, this is 11 by 17, so it's fairly big at 300, deep, 300 oh. dpi. Okay. My plan is to make a poster for my kid because <laughs> it's a oh. painting of him. So I'm going to yeah. print it out big uh, for his room. That's neat. Does he know you're working on this? Uh, no. So it's kind, oh. of, kind of a surprise. Oh. Hey, he just. Grant, uh, he, sorry, go sorry. ahead. No, no, please. Graham wants to know if you're going to hide the pencil layer once you're done or if you're going to leave it there. Uh, there's a couple things. Um, once I render a lot of this with the uh, pencil layer on top uh, I usually turn it off or, or get rid of it uh, if I am working on a and I found this uh, pretty helpful if I'm working on a strict deadline and I want to you know have that that drawing be part of my illustration um, I may flatten everything together at one point and use that layer to inform a lot of the darks, if that makes sense. So let me show you what I mean. Let's uh, drop all. So now my pencil layer, all my layers are merged together. Now I'm gonna try to make as few of marks so I can go back and just undo it. But you can see uh, I can use the grainy, uh, grainy jittery sponge blender and just use those colors to blend as much as I need to to keep keep the drawing in there, but still get the values. See what I did there? 
See that? Yes. Yes. Thank you. So it really depends on, um, you know, is is do I do I need to go back in there? Can I can I actually use the color and uh, of the drawing multiplied and or and just create that? So with the uh, the shirt here. Because I was doing this for a long time, uh, where I would just select the color of the the gray, the the drawing multiplied over the color, and it kind of creates that that darker value. But then I got to thinking like, hey, why don't I just use the color? Why don't I just use that layer and blend it? The other thing you can do is also just render. You can bring your using the grainy blender. You can just take those that and just uh, let's just bring the reset down and and just use that drawing to kind of create the value too. You can see what it looks like when I turn it off, right? I can come in here and just I mean, again. It just depends on. What you're trying to do with your illustration? Do you want is does your illustration style call for line work, or does it call for it to be fully rendered and look like an oil or acrylic painting? You well, this was, this was so fantastic. It's the top of the hour, and uh. I don't expect you to sit here and paint for the rest of the day. Ah, <laughs> uh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everybody would love that. But uh, what I, uh, what I would like to do is finish this, and uh, if you're interested in seeing the final, um, just give me a few days, and uh, I'll be able to post it I'm on Instagram, uh, oh, Facebook. Oh, that would be great. And then we can share your posts. Tag us, and we'll be sure to share that. You know, there was one question that we didn't get to and everything else we got to. So I'm really excited. Um, okay. What graphics card do you use? Oh, graphics card. So I'm working on a MacBook Pro. And let's, uh, let's just see. Just give me one second. I'll look, look up. Uh, give me a one second. Uh, <laughs> I never know how to say it. Nvidia uh, oh. GeForce GT 750 uh, M. Yeah, Nvidia. N Nvidia, yeah. Okay. Fantastic, Doug. This was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Keep in touch. I'm on Instagram and uh, I have a website, dougsaroyce.com.